What's up everybody? A man of his word. Occasionally saying he will do more videos. Doing more videos. Hope that will last because it's uh, an enjoyable thing. Um, not so enjoyable is the very recent passing of Sir... Well, he wasn't Sir. Deserved to be a Sir. John Surtees. Uh, which prompted me thinking I'll do a video immediately. I'll go into the V12 Formula Vintage in Automobilista, which we have here. I'll get some crappy version of Monza and uh, win the race, just like he did. Uh, I didn't do it because I was quite sad about uh, losing this amazing driver from a bygone era. And, uh, well, there's, there's no... I don't see any issue with, with talking about sort of the sadder things in life, but... It turned around over the weekend. No more tissues. I did need a few. Yes, I'm only human. And back to thorough enjoyment in the simulator. Uh, this is not the uh, Formula Vintage that you have in Automobilista. It's one of my own uh, test beds in need of plenty of work. Probably a bit less grip than uh, available uh, on, on the regular Automobilista. So that's harder, which is only better. <laughs> Because it has to be hard, otherwise it's not sim. So, remembering John Surtees driving the Formula Vintage at uh, Johannesburg Historic, which is of course a bit like uh, Kialami, where he scored a podium in 67. And I was just reminded by the, the awesomeness of the era. I felt it was about time to do some laps in uh, historic equipment. You already uh, saw the pedal bars in a couple of videos. The most recent videos. Oh dear. And now you'll see the blue one as well. Because I'm trying to heal and tow. Clutches up shifts. But clutch on the way down. Just touching 300 kilometers an hour. Oh, whoa, 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 and I'm breaking, outbreaking myself. Quite easy to outbreak yourself in a 67 era inspired F1 car. Modern day speeds without the modern day brakes or grip. These are wonderful, wonderful cars, a wonderful era of racing. So pure. An excellent uh, driving skill learning tool, car setup tool, because unlike most modern race cars, which are so stiff and depend on the arrow, the, sh the chassis adjustments sometimes don't seem to do an awful lot. But on cars like this, with quite a bit of suspension travel, oh dear, fourth gear, fifth gear. Lots of suspension travel, you really notice the effect of anti-roll bars, dampers, spring rates. You have to brake so gently into these corners. Miss the apex, understeer a little bit.
I'm not entirely sure my uh, heel and towing would be quite as functional in the real cars because I think they often double clutch. Which uh, <laughs> that would make a good April Fool's video, me trying to double clutch. It's uh, quite a horrible, horrible, nasty mess. I got a brain failure. So when, when it comes to shifting... You see I'll press the clutch first and then do the blip. You certainly don't want to be in gear or without the clutch pressed and then start blipping because that will provide drive on the rear tires. That's something to uh, to look at when you try to heal and tow, or double the clutch if you're uh, a god. Upshifts doesn't need the clutch, but you want to lift off the throttle first and then shift. Because in reality you wouldn't be able to shift if there was still load on the drivetrain. Oh, I keep some load on the brakes here. Lift shifts. Clutch flip. Oh, too many gears down. <laughs> Fail. No. So the era then. 50s, 60s, 70s. These days, the cars are so well engineered, so well built, you can drive them at 100% for the entire race. Or in, even at Le Mans, you could drive them at 100% for 24 hours. But if you look at the races of these days, the number of suspension failures, gearbox failures, engine failures, it's incredible how often things broke. So it was far more up to the driver not to break his equipment and that meant probably not revving it to ten and a half as I just did. Leaving a bit of margin everywhere. Drivers who were uh, easy on the equipment really had an advantage over people who were too rough. Very, very easy to break uh, a gearbox, for example. And that's also shifting, manual shifting. In a car without aero, you don't want to shift mid-corner, for example. That's quite tricky. You have to take your hand off the wheel, it sets the balance. And the less shifts you have to do, the more likely the gearbox will hold up. So, perhaps even though it would cost you a little bit of speed, you would take some of the slower corners in third gear instead of second gear to make your driving a bit smoother, a bit easier on your equipment. Whereas these days you can just use the optimal gear, shift as often as you want. Plus the 
shift doesn't upset the car as much as it used to. So in, in, in that regard this era of racing was completely different plus the fact that you were literally sitting in a bathtub of fuel. Coming back to John Surtees he went from, uh, if you don't know, a motorcycle world champion to becoming F1 world champion. Still the only man to have ever done that, and probably the only man who ever will. So, he went from sitting on top of a small fuel tank, sitting in between, oh don't forget this corner, sitting in between a huge 200 liter fuel tank, because apparently two wheels wasn't risky enough. With the awareness that you were sitting in the bathtub of fuel, very weak sort of chassis that any mild crash could be fatal that meant that you didn't want the car to break you didn't want to die well plenty of people sadly did it's not as 10 tense driving as you see these days those who did most likely aren't alive anymore so in many ways, over the weekend, I came to appreciate what John Surtees has managed to do. And how active he's uh, remained until right till the end. Because anybody who's raced cars in the 50s and 60s, 70s, is alive and kicking today. Sort of, uh, well, master the art of of life you would say not much more you can get out of it so he did live to the fullest then there was of course the tragic tragic events of his uh, his son dying at Brands Hatch in the Formula 2 race getting a wheel that came loose of some other car against his head that was so sad and was his interview with uh, John heard these afterwards sometime and you couldn't help but choke up a little bit. And then he started his foundation aiming to uh, further improve the safety around British circuits. And that just, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that right now. Now I'm sure at times John Surtis was difficult to work with. Somebody, some people left all, but he was a legend on two wheels, on four wheels. Ran his own race team. His son passed away behind the wheel of a racing car. And even though he was about 80 years old, he then started a foundation. I mean, wow, that's just amazing. Right, let's try to do the era justice with a couple of good laps. Uh, next lap then.
such tricky cars, such long braking zones, not a huge amount of grip. Patience, rolling, long, long, slowly getting off the brakes and slowly on the throttle, it's quite a delicate act. sliding a little very very easy to get over excited As I uh, am. Three hundred kilometers an hour in a bathtub of fuel approaching the braking zone. Drifting at in fourth gear. In fourth gear drifting, which is a considerable speed in this uh, type of car. And those long deep braking zones, slowly off the brake pedal, never too sudden, or otherwise it will wash out. Keep a bit of load on the fronts. No steering on the exit, all done with the throttle. What an era! Just trying to repeat myself. Starting to go off the track, yes, that's slightly better. Again, this is not the version you have in Automobilista, it's my own sort of test bed. That is quite hard to drive. By no means finished. If at all, just a work in progress, messing about. I think the time trial best lap is 117. So that just goes to show that this car would not do that. But also, time trial in this car is... Well, doing flappy pedal shifting and left foot braking. might make you quicker but that's totally not in the right spirit of the era and uh, the way these cars were meant to be driven running wide sadly one more lap that never goes according to plan Getting up there, 26. Hard on the brakes. Trying too hard as usual. I had it in turn one, turning on the brakes. Then I applied too much steering and it turned into understeer. Very easy to do. Nice drift out of the door. Turn. Oh, late.
the steering rack is quite slow, so I might steer quite a bit, but it, they're not the hugest uh, slides or corrections. Oh, 46 thousandths. Not too bad. Anyway, guys. Thank you for watching. Godspeed, John Surtees. You've been uh, amazing to this uh, world of racing. I uh, salute you and, uh, and your son and your family. Thanks guys for watching. See you later. Bye bye.